Okay, here uh, there are two figures of uh, blast furnace which I would like you to pay attention on it uh, on them because what we would be discussing now uh, you may need some idea of the various zones of the blast furnace. So, especially like this is the Bose region and sorry this is a uh, belly region which is sort of a cylindrical and this is a Bose region. So, like here you can see this is a belly region and this is a Bose region um, and this is the stake region dead main zone and this is the heart combustion bustle pipe. So, that is a bustle main and Bose angle, angle tears blow pipe goose neck mantle tap hole bell throat stock line the, these are the things which uh, we would be discussing in this one especially about the busted pipe blow pipe mantle boss belly stack and this cooling uh, plates where water cooling is taking place. So, uh, you should be aware of the position of these uh, zones and other thing and this is a bell less uh, uh, charging and with the bell. So, you should be aware about uh, <coughs> the difference in this though we have talked already about this in the construction and interior of the blast furnace and all those things. So, just to refresh your memory I am again uh, showing this figure to you. Uh, so, you can understand when we go further uh, about the um, blast furnace few operations. So, there are two important operations in the blast furnace one is blow in and another is blow out processes of a blast furnace. So, a process to start a new or relined blast furnace is called as blow in. So, either it can be a new furnace or it could be even a relined one. So, the main steps in this process are so how to start the new furnace the steps are drying, filling, lighting and finally, the operation. So, we will discuss these four steps one by one. So, you can understand uh, what is the meaning of all these and how long it takes and time. So, the first step is drying. <coughs> so, a newly lined furnace contains significant amount of moisture which must be removed before the furnace is put in the normal operation. So, this is a very critical step and very important and one has to make sure all moisture must be driven away. And the time spent in this is worth it then later on regretting uh, when some problem comes or you encounter during the operation of the blast furnace. So, it is a worth spending time on removing of the moisture completely from the bricks and other places. So, and this can be achieved by adopting one of the following method. So, either to supply hot blast into the furnace from the stove. So, if there are existing blast furnaces in the plant, you can always use the stop of that one to supply the hot blast. So, initial blast temperature is around 200 degrees Celsius and which is slowly raised to 400 degrees Celsius keeping the blast volume low. So, that can be done from the tap holes and through the tubes you uh, blow that hot blast 
uh, which you get it from the stop. If the stops are not there and, and there is only standalone blast furnace in the plant, then one can use the second method, hearth fire method, what is known as. So, in this method, fire is built in the hearth using wood, coal, or coke and controlled through the tear shutters and furnace bleeders. It is difficult to regulate the temperature in this method. So, so in this one at the bottom of the hearth you use this carbon acid material to burn it um, uh, by using the control air through the tubers, um, shutters and furnace bleeders. But only problem is in this one uh, it is a bit difficult to uh, control the temperature um, in the furnace. But if stops are not there, this is one of the method one can adopt to um, remove the moisture and heat up the furnace in the starting. Um, if that is not there, then there is another method which sometimes uh, is used, though, though it is bit expensive. So, in this one, you uh, what is called the Dutch oven method. So, in this one, usually two or three ovens or four ovens are built outside the furnace. So, this is actually in one way the extra ovens you are building outside the furnace. So, more um, <coughs> sort of infrastructure uh, and uh, money is needed in this one. So, it is a bit expensive in that way. Uh, out, so, ovens are built outside the furnace and the product of combustion with excess hot air are directed to tap holes and some to the tear opening. So, essentially what you are getting, you are getting a hot uh, product of combustion from this and with the excess uh, hot air which is directed from tears or tap holes opening, you get the temperature the way you do get it in uh, the first method. So, by adopting this uh, one of these method, uh, one can uh, remove the moisture uh, from a new blast furnace or reliant furnace, which is an essential step um, toward the operation. So, second step comes is the filling. So, after drying and clearing of the furnace, clearing of the furnace if you have used the second method or some other. So, you have to remove whatever is left over there and clearing of the furnace its temperature is brought down by turning on the coolers and inspection is carried out of all the material mechanical, electrical and physical equipment before filling the furnace. So, this is a very important and essential part in all the blast furnace starting up. Because now this is the last chance which gives you um, to rectify if there is any problem in any of the equipment coolers are on. Uh, so, uh, temperature goes down in that one even the personnel can go inside and check the things and check all the thing outside cooler, mechanical, electrical, physical all things are running and one can check if there is any problem. Because when the furnace is operation all these things are quite expensive and very difficult to maintain. So, this uh, uh, to do list is prepared during this time and all checking takes place take place in uh, during this time before filling. So, usually a start up charge consists of 
coke and a small amount of flux below the mantle. So, below the mantle you put coke and a small amount of flux. Sometimes wooden slippers are used near the tap holes to facilitate the gases to escape. So, when the uh, you, uh, the temperature start rising. So, due to this cork flux and uh, thing uh, are there, then sometimes it is difficult uh, really to escape the gas, uh, gases. Of course, they go from the top, that time top is also open in the starting, but you can put the wooden slipper uh, near the tap holes. So, that gives a good sort of process to escape the uh, initial gases. Flux is added um, as mentioned here, so that it can combine with the coke ash to form slag. Often limestone and slag is charged in the boss region. So, the early high volume slag in the hearth makes sure that hearth is heated up sufficiently to receive the liquid ion. So, naturally with you are putting a small amount of flux. So, starting slag is more towards siliceous side, silicon side as and th that is actually good and uh, you need also high volume slag. So, you put more slag and that make the uh, heart heated up. So, it is uh, able to collect the liquid on when furnace is in the normal operation. So, on the coke blank above the mantle level lower as of iron over to coke generally 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 is placed and this ratio is increased gradually. Naturally, the first few casts will have a higher silicon content which may go up to 4.5 percent, which is brought down to normal levels slowly when the blast furnace move towards the normal operation. When we say towards the normal operation, slowly, slowly as uh, we start this uh, iron or to coke ratio to the normal one and then the normal operation is established your even silicon content also reduced during that time. So, this is the flint process after drying uh, is done in, uh, in the blast furnace and after that once you have packed it with or and other things then lighting. So, lighting and operation it has been combined into one during the starting we put it uh, third and fourth, but here is, it is combined, but it does not matter you can see the difference. So, usually the hot blast air in the temperature range of 550 to 650 degrees Celsius is introduced through the tuya, which ignites the coke within a few minutes. So, when you are injecting that sort of high temperature blast air naturally coke will ignite very soon. So, in another method, so this is one of the methods in the another method what we do we put easily combustible materi material are placed in front of the tuya and that are ignited using the gas torches or red hot bar by inserting the red hot bars. These are sort of a old one mostly using the gas torches to do it. Burning is allowed with natural draught. So, before ignition the wells that is top wells are opened and dust catcher dump valve 
is closed because in the starting lots of case amount dust and other thing would be there. So, tap holes are kept open so that hot gases can escape until the slag begins to appear. So, these things are done till the slag begins to appear in the hot region. So, when a good amount of gases emerge out of the top, the well are closed and dust catcher dump valve is opened. So, now all the gases and dust catcher goes through that. With 24 within 24 to 36 hours after the start up of the furnace, the first metal is cast which is very high in silicon content. Slowly raise of iron ore to coke in burden is increased until normal operation is established. Sometime charge calculation is made based on top gas analysis especially COCO2 ratio. So, as we mentioned in the previous in this slide that any uh, ratio of iron ore to coke is 0.5 to 0.6 and slowly you increase it in 0 0.0 5 or 0 0.3 sort of ratio slowly slowly and another way of uh, doing it to analyze the COCO2 ratio and based on that uh, you can slowly increase the um, ion or content into the charge. Uh, so, that is another way of doing it until the normal operation uh, resumes. So, this is sort of a starting a normal a starting process of the blast furnace which is a new one and relined ones. Many times uh, you shut down the blast furnace uh, when the uh, when its life is over and you have to reline it and again you have to start in the same way. So, some of the uh, this uh, this figure shows a typical blow in cycle of a furnace. So, x x this is uh, showing hours this shows the silicon content in percentage and that is the hot metal temperature. So, as you can see that is uh, when it is start. Uh, so, it is not taking care of the time of drying and other. So, uh, when the blow uh, filling and after lighting start the third step and slowly the temperature rises and uh, it. Uh, so, here you do it and first metal sort of probably is appearing somewhere here and you can see the slag had already built up and slag, uh, slag content slowly slowly increasing uh, uh, the actually silicon content in the slag and which you can uh, see silicon content in the uh, slag is reaching almost 5 percent and it is slowly slowly reducing as you start. Uh, so, there you can say probably the first uh, casting of the slag which is appearing here and because you are starting the um, now uh, ore to coke ratio um, uh, in, in increased form slowly slowly this ratio is coming down and it uh, finally, it reaches to its normal um, silicon content less than 1 percent. So, that is where the normal operation is resumed and even your hot metal temperature is getting stabilized here. So, this shows uh, almost uh, uh, 3 to 4 days minimum is taking to get the normal operation of the blast furnace uh, after blowing. And uh, <coughs> so, like blowing, we also have the operation like blow down or blow out. 
So, blow down and blow out is after reaching the campaign life, the furnace is shut down for relining. The process of shutting down the furnace is known as blow down or blow out. However, between blow in and blow down, the furnace may at times have to be shut down for short period for various reasons like serious breakdowns, raw material shortage, lever trouble, etcetera. So, one is furnace has reached the compound life, so it has to be completely shut down, emptied it for relining or by other reason if one has to shut it down completely. Another one which is very often it is done uh, in the plant due to very serious breakdown um, in the equipment or in some other thing. Sometime you are running sort of uh, uh, so, uh, raw material shortage, labor problem or any other thing comes. So, you have to shut it down and not in a sort of a shut it down is in one way you have to hang the blast furnace for um, few hours to few days depending what sort of problem it is. So, you cannot really shut it down the blast furnace. Uh, due to this problem because uh, as you know it is quite difficult uh, uh, shutting down the process we will discuss about that and not just shutting down especially the restarting of the blast furnace that the blow in it is a long process and quite expensive one. So, one cannot just shut it down like that. So, there are ways if when a short period disruption from hours to days happen. Um, there are there are ways by which uh, this sort of problem can be handled. So there are some methods. So various types of shutdown are described below. One is fanning. So when the full production capacity of the furnace is not required for time being, the hot blast rate is reduced to 20 to 25 percent. Many times it's happened. <coughs> there is a Late demand and supply is more, so you have to reduce the production and one of the reason that time you can do by reducing <coughs> uh, the hot blast rest to this or some uh, thing at the downstream has uh, uh, broken down and then one has to take care of it. So, one has to again reduce the ca capacity or production rate of the blast furnace. So, that is the time you take the hot blast rate. Uh, by 20 to 25 percent out. So, this method is known as fanning. So, in this method furnace can be resumed to normal operation at a relatively short notice. It is used for emergency and short period only. Prolonged use of it may result in heart build up and wall scale formation. So, uh, this is for a very short period it is used for emergency and other thing. So, this is one of the way you can uh, uh, reduce the uh, or blow down the furnace for few hours. Another one is back drafting. So, back <coughs> drafting when the blast is taken off for the short period of time. So, here you are taking off the whole blast nothing is coming. In the previous one as you can see 20 to 25 percent is reduced. So, here when the blast is taken off for the short period of time to perform various maintenance operations, the process is known as back drafting. So, as soon as blast is stopped, the versatile pipe is put under, under slight negative pressure. This is done by opening chimney valve and hot blast bulb to a stove where air is admitted through the peep sites and stove burners to burn the gas in the stove. Bleeders at the top of the furnace is also opened <coughs> to pull some of the blast furnace gas out. In some blast furnace 
a special bag draft stack is installed for this purpose avoiding the use of stops. <coughs> so, many terms which uh, are used here uh, <coughs> excuse me you, uh, you have seen uh, in those figures. So, I do not have to repeat otherwise you can go again look at the figures and see those things. So, um, uh, so in this one actually a negative pressure is put on the bustle pipe <coughs> and uh, stops uh, the gas is burned in the stove. Bleeders at the top of the furnace is also open and uh, to pull some of the blast burning gas out and in some blast furnace. Um, a special bag draft stick is installed for this purpose. So, if this is there then you do not send it to stops and you avoid the use of stops in that. So, <coughs> that is called bag drafting and another uh, process of blow down is uh, banking. So, it is a standard procedure for blast furnace to shut it down on temporary basis. So, example for again scheduled repair breakdown etcetera. So, this is uh, actually for a longer period of uh, uh, time in comparison to your uh, this back drafting. So, in this process blast is taken off covering the fire with coke. So, it is totally taken off covering the fire that is at the door, top with coke, looting up all air inlets and smoothing the stove with fine material. Thus, the heat is preserved in the hut so that furnace can be put in normal operation with minimum of hertz. So, you are covering, covering your uh, fire or actually at the top with the coke just closing up all air inlets and smoothing the stock with fine material. So, you are preserving the heat. For longer time shutdown, banking burden is similar to the blow in burden. If you would like to shut it down for a much longer period, then the burden would be the same as we had in the blow in period. So, when the coke blank reaches the top of the boss, the blast is taken off, all the metals and slag accumulated in the earth is tapped, stock is covered with fine ores to prevent drought, the tap holes and tears are plugged in, bleeders are open, steam is turned into dust catcher, the blast furnace is isolated from the common gas system and bells are closed. So, these are the thing which is done and this one in fact, uh, it is necessary that every day one should uh, inspect it uh, the level of the stock how the charge is sinking. So, daily inspection of stock level is necessary to take the proper measure. The furnace is restarted by replacing the tear and notches and charging sufficient coke to fill up the space created by sinking of the stock. So, all other are steps are similar to blowing operation. So, this is actually for a longer period of time if you would like to shut it down the furnace then banking is done and in this one every uh, day one has to inspect the stock and take the uh, necessary action it should not be descending very fast, the necessary uh, uh, action should be taken. So, sufficient, uh, so most of the other steps in this one are like a blowing operation which we had discussed before. 